For decades, clients have relied on Falskin Associates to assist them with the design of their emergency relief systems. As experts in sizing pressure relief devices for reactive chemistries, we are frequently approached with reactive upset scenarios that require relief device sizing. The first step in assisting such clients is laboratory testing to quantify runaway reaction rates and the flow regime that results from a specified upset scenario. After this information is gathered, relief devices and associated discharge piping can be sized. However, it is very important to remember that these steps are only part of the solution when it comes to relief system design. A key aspect that unfortunately is sometimes neglected is effluent handling. In many cases, direct discharge to the atmosphere is unacceptable due to toxicity, corrosivity, or flammability of the effluent. The Center for Chemical Process Safety describes different types of effluent handling equipment and provides guidance on the best type of equipment to use. This video is intended to emphasize the key things to know for one specific type of effluent handling equipment, the knockout tank, which is sometimes referred to as the separation tank. As the name implies, a knockout tank is designed to knock out or separate liquid from vapor during a two-phase relief discharge. Three types commonly used in the industry are the vertical gravitational separation tank, the horizontal gravitational separation tank, and the cyclone separation tank. Each of these types has its advantages and disadvantages. For example, a cyclone separation tank can be designed with more effective separation than the gravitational types, meaning the tank will have a smaller footprint while being capable of separating the same size or smaller liquid droplets. The trade-off is in the complexity of the design, which carries increased construction cost. Regardless of the type, the dimensions of a knockout tank are chosen so that the fallout velocity of a liquid droplet is greater than the superficial velocity of the vapor, while providing enough volume for accumulation of the separated liquid. A common mistake we come across is a knockout tank that is too small given the size of the relieving equipment and the reactive upset scenario. A knockout tank that is the same size as a reactor or storage tank is often not able to effectively do its job. As a rule of thumb for reactive upset scenarios, knockout tanks typically need to be two to four times the volume of the process vessel that could discharge into it. Why is this a problem? A big reason is that discharging significant amounts of liquid to disposal systems such as a scrubber or flare is often not acceptable. In the case of a scrubber, doing so is likely to overwhelm the scrubber or lead to an impractical design. In the case of the flare, it can lead to burning rain, in which escaped liquid particles burn and remain on fire as they fall to the ground. API 521 recommends limiting the diameter of discharged liquid particles to between 300 to 600 micrometers in order to prevent such a phenomenon. As illustrated in this video, a knockout tank is an important component of a properly designed emergency relief system. Sizing relief devices and associated piping is an important first step, but proper consideration of effluent handling ensures a problem isn't simply moved from one area of a facility to another. Join us next time when we discuss another important piece of effluent handling equipment, the quench tank, and learn when it should be used instead of a knockout tank. Please don't hesitate to contact Fowski & Associates for all your relief system design needs. Thanks for watching.